You're listening to The Gary Harris Show on Tide 100.9 in Tuscaloosa. With us now to save big why so many are switching to BMW. BMW of Tuscaloosa. Take your dreams for a drive. The Gary Harris Show. You see him host Tide or Insider TV. Crimson Tide kickoff. Play-by-play for Alabama sports and sports director for WVUA 23. It's time for the Gary Harris Show on your home for Alabama sports. Tide 100.9 and streaming on the Tide 100.9 app. Show on this Friday, October 25th, 2024. It is absolutely gorgeous outside today. Another just uh, really Indian summer day is what they refer to as uh, these type of days when I was growing up, when it was a little bit warmer. Or, you know, I guess you could say even say hotter than it's supposed to be this time of the year. <clears throat> but pardon me, but the uh, sun was shining and and it was warm outside so it is one of those type of days it's going to be uh, in well into the 80s again i think yesterday we might have tied uh, a record high for the temperature in tuscaloosa but gorgeous nonetheless and i'm live at ennis free iris pub that's right friday's at the free here in tuscaloosa at 1925 university boulevard and they don't open until 11 a.m but I'm here already broadcasting, and as I've said before, just saying now, there's going to be no food or beverages served until 11 a.m. when they open the doors. But if somebody's out and about and wants to kind of slide in and hang out, that side door is uh, is open, uh, but none of the chairs are down or anything like that. But I am ready to roll here at Ennis Free Irish Pub. Friday's at the free. Got a good show on tap for you. I'm going to tell you all about it in just a moment. Uh, but first, let me uh, check in with Chase Brumfeld back in the studios on Skyland Boulevard producing the program. And a little bit of excitement this morning. When I got over here, we didn't have the feed, but uh, thanks to, to Audio Bob, who um, does so much work around our Town Square stations, uh, primarily with Steve and DC, but uh, live setups and, and everything. Uh, he was out here to set up, and he got back to the station and made sure we're good. Sounding pretty good right now, aren't we, Chase? Sound wonderful. How are you doing today, Gary? Doing well, doing well. Uh, yeah, I'm good. I'm good to go. I, uh, you know, Wednesday was out and um, back to work yesterday. Still probably not feeling a hundred percent, but uh, excited to be here. And uh, yeah, Bob hustled in there and got us on the air, didn't he? Didn't he, Chase? <laughs> Working like Lightning McQueen over there. Yeah, I love it. He is fast, man. He does a he does a great job. So we appreciate him and appreciate you back there at the uh, back there at the station. You ready for a uh, another home game day weekend? And on top of that, it's homecoming, and it was Kayla DeBoer's birthday yesterday. So and Alabama has to win this game. I don't think that they're you know I don't think they can drop another one and have any shot at the playoffs. So this is a big weekend, Chase. Yes, it is. Um, I'm not going to lie. I'm a little nervous, Gary. I don't know what to expect. Even with Brady Cook um, and some of the key pieces for Missouri kind of looming to be out, I'm just, I don't know what's going to be of uh, for Alabama this weekend. Um, I'm, I'm going to need some motivation or some pray, something to get me confident for this weekend. <laughs> Well, you know what? They just have to go out, and, and Jamarian Latham uh, was interviewed this week, the former Pickens County High School standout, fifth-year defensive lineman for Alabama. I ran a clip on my sports show last night on WVUA 23, and he, th- I think, kind of summed it up. you got to play a 60-minute game. you got to play complementary football for 60 minutes. What I mean is offense, defense, and the kicking game all need to be working well for 60 minutes if alabama does that i still think they can beat anybody in the country heck man they've proven that they beat the georgia bulldogs which is georgia's the team that nobody else can beat i mean it nobody else can beat georgia nobody's beat georgia in i guess it's three or four years now other than alabama so if you can beat georgia you can beat anybody my friend and um the the challenge for alabama is to put that type of performance together in other games beginning tomorrow and if they do that tomorrow if they play their best they're going to win that football game and we're going to kind of get back on track but we will see we got a great show on tap for you today live from industry iris pub uh before i tell you about the uh, lineup and of course we got our uh, uh t-town 
menswear, T-Town Gallery, Alabama football trivia giveaway coming up in the second hour. Before I tell you about all that, though, let me tell you about Alabama Credit Union. Member-owned and not-for-profit, it's just a better way of banking. You can find out more at alabamacu.com. That's alabamacu.com. Unlike a traditional banking institution, which is taking its profits to pay off its shareholders, Alabama Credit Union is taking its profits and returning them to you, the shareholder or not the shareholder, but the member, in the form of lower interest rates and higher dividends. I think that's something we can all get excited about. Alabama Credit Union Loans for Real Life. Some rules and restrictions do apply. See if you're eligible for membership. Then join today and feel good about your money. And put extra change in your pocket. All right, the lineup for today, we are full. Matt Coulter is with us on NASCAR at 930. Couldn't be with us on Wednesday because I was out. Then tried to reschedule him for Thursday. <clears throat> he wasn't feeling well, so we got him today to talk about NASCAR and football. And then at 10 o'clock, Chase Goodbread, sports columnist from the Tuscaloosa News. Can't wait to visit with Chase. He had a very interesting column this week on Alabama football in regards to the fake jump shots and is that symbolic of something else on this team. We'll visit with Chase. And then at 10.30... It's Brett Pritchard with the Auburn Report. Brett Pritchard from the Auburn Blitz. So we are jam-packed today. If you want to join in on the program, the Pinnacle Park at North River Hotline is available at 205-342-9904. That's 205-342-9904. We would love to hear from you. All right, let me hit some news and notes uh, before we get into the show full speed. Alabama football, of course, getting ready for Missouri. The rest of the SEC schedule, we're going to be breaking that down. Of course, I'm going to have my SEC point spread predictions as well. After a great week last week, came back this week and had a very, very, very poor week as I uh, <clears throat> just can't seem to, to build any consistency. And I went 2, 5, and 1 last week after going 5 and 2 the week before that. So that good... Uh, Week uh, got canceled out, but I'll be picking those games again. But also last night we had Thursday night NFL football on Amazon Prime. And the Rams uh, got Cooper cut back, and they beat the Vikings. So the Vikings now have lost two in a row after that 5-0 and start, and uh, they fall in uh, Los Angeles to the Rams at SoFi Stadium 30-20. to Also, Alabama soccer last night wins its senior night game against Florida 3-1. to That's... Uh, A big, big, big victory for Alabama soccer. I mean, that's a, that's one that, uh, um, is huge. Um, some really tragic news. Amir Abdul Rahim, the 43 year old head coach of the South Florida Bulls basketball team, passed away yesterday, uh, from complications during a medical procedure. One of the really bright young coaches in college basketball. So, uh, Tragic news from down in Tampa on Thursday. Jamison Williams, former Alabama football player, part of our Bama in the NFL. Updates, of course, suspended two games, and he has accepted that suspension for PEDs, performance-enhancing drugs. He said he has no clue uh, what led to the negative test or the failed test, but he is out two games, and he says he will not appeal it. So... uh, Disappointing news there for Jamison Williams and the Lions. But uh, Detroit's got a really fine football team, and uh, I'm sure they'll be fine. But they'll get uh, they'll get Jamison back after two games. But still, that's, uh, that's disappointing for him and for the Detroit Lions. As far as the NBA, it is off and running. It's hard to really fathom um, that now already we've got <clears> – <throat> We haven't even started the World Series, which starts tonight in Los Angeles, Dodgers and Yankees, which is a classic matchup, obviously. But we haven't even gotten to the World Series, and we've already got National Hockey League and NBA going, along, obviously, with the NFL. So you've got all four major professional sports in this country going on at the same time. That used to never happen. Uh, Back when I was growing up, the World Series was always wrapped up by mid-October. I mean, wrapped up. Now it's not even starting until October the 25th, You know, obviously going to November. NBA basketball would start maybe right at the end of October, around Halloween, <clears throat> early November. Same thing with the National Hockey League. But now the NHL starts early October. The NBA starts, well, they started this week. World Series hasn't even begun. 
and the NFL is only about seven weeks in. So <laughs> if you're a professional sports fan, uh, you're enjoying this. All right, we got a lot to cover, as I said this morning. We're going to start breaking it down. Your phone calls are welcome on the Pinnacle Park at North River Hotline at 205-342-9904. Again, that's 205-342-9904. Let me hear from you there on the hotline, and uh, we're wide open for phone calls in the next segment. Matt Coulter on NASCAR coming up at 930. Tuscaloosa News columnist Chase Goodbread at 10, and Brett Pritchard from the Auburn Blitz at 1030. Plus our Bama football trivia giveaway. Presented by T-Town Menswear and T-Town Gallery. Chase, you give me a little input here. I haven't decided whether I'm going to do it at 10 or 1030. Do you have a preference? I like 10. Because I think... Are doing it at 10? Or yeah, we can do 10. 10. when we interview Chase. So I'll have the trivia question ready. We've got that uh, beautiful Greg Gamble print this week. Uh, is the Man of Steel. It is Trent Richardson. You know, we gave away relentless a couple of weeks ago the steve skipper version of the alabama 42 14 win over the iron bowl uh, uh, over auburn back in 2011 this is the greg gamble version entitled man of steel with uh, trent richardson running through the auburn defense i'll get a picture of that out on the uh, social media and um uh, We'll be ready to uh, we'll be ready to rock and roll here on the Gary Harris Show. All right, it's nine thirteen. Let's get to a break, and when we come back, it is going to be all about Alabama football. Let's get those phone calls rolling in here. I'm live at Innis Free Irish Pub for Fridays at the Free, the Gary Harris Show. We'll continue right after this. Here's what's trending on the Tuscaloosa thread. Good Friday morning. Tuscaloosa County Circuit Clerk McGarry Bobo denying a claim of voter suppression made by the Tuscaloosa NAACP chapter. Chapter President Lisa Young claims some who applied have not received absentee ballots despite Election Day being a week from this coming Tuesday. Bobo denies the delay is intentional from her office. Bobo says slow mail service may be the culprit. Click TuscaloosaThread.com for more local news sports and weather coverage all throughout the day. It's free. Don Hartley, Town Square Media, Tuscaloosa. As much as Innisfree has evolved, it will always be that place to escape and have a good time. Whether it's for a game day weekend, to reminisce on college days, or to create new memories, if you're looking for a good time, there's only one thing to do. Head to the free at 1925 University Boulevard. And don't forget about the Lucky Lunch Meat and 3 special. Monday through Friday from 11 a.m. until 2 p.m., get a meat and 3 vegetables for just $8.49. Or for a lighter appetite, try the Lucky Lunch Soup, Salad, or Sandwich Combo. I'll see you at the free. Tuscaloosa's Old Colony Golf Course is an 18-hole championship championship layout designed by 1976 U.S. Open champion Jerry Pate. Director of Golf John Gray and fitting specialist Bob Montgomery are PGA certified. Mike Shivitz is the head professional and director of the Tuscaloosa Junior Golf Program. Call today to secure a tee time. Or you can shop online at TuscaloosaCDJR.com. At Tuscaloosa Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram, you pick it out and we'll work it out. Roll tide. Life doesn't wait for when your finances are in perfect order. It just happens. But no matter what surprises come your way, Alabama Credit Union will be here to help make it affordable with great personal loans, mortgages, and auto loans. They offer an easy application process and fast decisions so you can stay focused on feeling good about whatever life brings your way. Alabama Credit Union will be here to help make it affordable with great personal loans, mortgages, pickup, or enjoy free shipping to your home on purchases over $25. Your new Academy Sports and Outdoor Store is located at 4610 U.S. Highway 280 in Birmingham. Since 2011, Billy Sports Grill, located on Main Avenue in historic downtown Northport, has been serving their legendary signature chicken sandwich, award-winning wings, and handcrafted cocktails. Billy's is also the spot to watch all your favorite sporting events with big screen, high definition televisions both dining rooms at the bar and outside on the beautiful patio come by and say hello to kim and lisa the billy's management dream team billy's good food good friends and good time tide 100.9 tuscaloosa weather the weather stays unseasonably warm today mostly sunny with a high at 86 fair tonight the low 58 tomorrow mostly sunny the high 84 sunday partly sunny a small chance of a shower sunday's high at 80 i'm james Spann on the abc 3340 weather center on tide 100.9 it's 57 degrees in tuscaloosa you're listening to The Gary Harris Show. Goal line in, touchdown, Alabama! On your home for Alabama sports. Tide 100.9. And streaming on the Tide 100.9 app. Boulevard, downtown 
Tuscaloosa. And we're part of Fridays at the Free. They'll open up at 11 a.m. and be ready to go for another game day weekend here in Tuscaloosa. Chase, where are our callers at this morning, man? This is uh, this is not like them. Usually on a game day weekend when I'm at Industry Irish Pub, they're they're lighting up the phone line. I know, Gary. Like Come on now. We I, I need to hear some pre-conversations. Now how you doing? Get you on air. Let's get rocking and rolling. Yeah. Let's get those calls coming in here, man. I like to have some interaction, especially on Friday. Uh, listen, it's, um, as I've said, all week. And already said this morning, uh, this game for Alabama is, um, it's the biggest game of the year. And we've always heard all those coaching slogans, you know, one game at a time and, and you know, be where your feet are and process. But that's truer today than it's ever been. I mean, I, I've i seen it this year, and you have too. I mean, Saturday to Saturday, um, it's just – it's hard to win. And it's also – the current state of college football has opened up opportunities for other teams to win. I mean, my gosh, you've got Indiana 7-0 and in the Big Ten – I mean, 7-0, and oh, undefeated. That's just unthinkable with a first-year head coach, Kurt Signetti, former Alabama assistant under Nick Saban. You got Vanderbilt in the mix in the SEC, 5-2. and two. Only one loss in the conference. I've already beaten Alabama. I've already beaten Kentucky. So... You can't just rely on, well, we're Alabama to roll out there and beat these teams, any of them. Nobody's laying down for anyone. No one is looking at a trip to Bryant-Denny Stadium, Saban Field at Bryant-Denny Stadium, and saying we can't win against Alabama. That's not the way the mindset is of these teams anymore. Um, even though it was in Nashville, Alabama had more – fans than Vandy did but Vandy won that game and they weren't intimidated by Alabama and they weren't saying well Alabama's going to roll in here and that's the one game this year that I felt like Alabama was a little smug and after the win over Georgia I don't feel like and this is just my opinion that they respected Vanderbilt the way that they should have now obviously that was not an issue last week with the Tennessee Volunteers obviously Alabama knew what that game represented it, how, represented how big it is to everyone, and they just didn't. Uh, they just didn't get the W. But against Vanderbilt, I don't feel like that they really saw that game. Uh, I don't really uh, feel like they they gave Vanderbilt the respect that they deserved, and it bit them in the rear end. So now. You've got your homecoming game tomorrow, which is always special, and you've got a quality opponent in Missouri. Now, again, and I haven't checked the latest from Columbia as far as their beat riders on Noel, the running back, and Cook, the quarterback, and their status for tomorrow. I'll check that some point this morning. But this is a quality team. You know, their only loss was at A&M. Yep, they got hammered at A&M, but they've won the rest of them, including that comeback Last Saturday over Auburn with a injured Brady Cook out. Auburn jumped to a 17-3 lead. He'd gone to the hospital for an ankle injury, the same ankle that he's dealing with this week. But he comes back from the hospital, comes back in the game, and leads Missouri to a victory, a huge victory. So if Alabama does not play well in this game tomorrow, they can lose. And that's really... To be honest with you, the way it's going to be the rest of the season. Now, maybe not against Mercer. Maybe that's the one game where Alabama just can just show up and, and get it done. But against everybody else, Missouri tomorrow, LSU in two weeks, at Oklahoma, which is having a bad year, but still, and in the Iron Bowl against Auburn, Alabama's got to play. And when I say they got to play, I mean they got to play well. They can't just, you know, go out there and have 115 yards and penalties and 
make mistakes. You're going to have to play better. As I said, complimentary football. I mean, you got to play well on both sides of the ball and in the kicking game. And I don't know that that's something that they've done very often this year. I thought they did it in the Wisconsin game. Obviously, they overwhelmed Western Kentucky. But in every other game, you know, there's been a lot to pick apart. Even in the Georgia game, you're up 28 nothing early in the second quarter. You're up 30-7 to at half. And then you lose that lead. And, you know, very fortunate to win that game. Very fortunate to win the South Carolina game. So there's a lot going on with this team. And if they don't get it right and get it fixed, they'll lose again. All right, let's jump out on the Pinnacle Park at North River Hotline. And uh, Larry the Music Man is with us because obviously I couldn't do the segment with Larry on Wednesday because I was out. But, uh, of course, big Bama fan as well. Good morning, Larry. Gary, you feeling better? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good. Hey, man, I... I've got some good stuff next week. I just want to tell everybody, and I, and I really missed everybody Wednesday. Yeah, you, 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 people, people missed your segment. Well, several of them let me know. Uh, and that's good. That. That's what I, we wanted. Uh, let's go. I'm going to see how this thing plays out over the weekend with Alabama. And if it goes down the tubes, I've got a story I want to tell, a musical story that might be relevant to whatever happens. But, uh, do you think, let's talk sports because we never do much, but if Milrow struggles again, what are we going to do? Well, um, I'm not, I'm not putting him, no, putting any negative on him. I'm, I'm just saying, I'm just, I'm if just he struggles he, again, well, he needs what to, are we? He needs, yeah. What I said earlier this week, Larry, is that when you're at the point Alabama's at now and you're, you're, probably a loss away from being eliminated from a 12-team playoff. Not guaranteed, but more than likely. Everything's on the table, or nothing's off the table. However, And what I mean by that is any player that's not playing uh, up to the standard of which the coaches believe they should play, uh, the coaching staff needs to be looking at playing someone else. Now, I believe in Jalen Milrow. I think everybody that listens to my show knows that. Uh, I think he's going to bounce back tomorrow and have a really fine game. But if something happens uh, in the game or in any game that a player is not playing the way that they need to play and it's it's hurting the team, then you have to look at, in my opinion, playing someone else. So I just think that that's, you know, that's the responsibility of a coaching staff. So uh, whether it's Milrow or whether it's an offensive tackle or whether it's a, a, a cornerback, if there is a position in the game where that player is not playing up to the standard, then I think you have to look at somebody else. Unless, unless Larry, you just flat out say to yourself as a coach, the next guy isn't going to be better than the guy we've got out there. Yeah. It's like an old, old story. Uh, uh, you know, uh, I've heard about, I think it was, might have been even Coach Bryant, but, uh, you know, there was a guy. Uh, he was ready to make a change. I think it might have been Coach Bryant. If not, it was another famous coach. And, and he brought a guy over and said, hey, I want you to uh, uh, go in there for so-and-so. Uh, you know, can you get it done? He said, Coach, I'll, I'll do my best. He said, well, get back over there. He's already doing his best. <laughs> you know, I don't need somebody yeah. to do their best. I need somebody to do – I need somebody to get the job done. I think every player in the game is going to do their best. You know, maybe – Sometimes maybe guys don't practice. Maybe sometimes guys don't prepare the way they should. But when the game comes along, everybody wants to play, Larry. You know that. Everybody wants to play in the game and wants to do their best. Uh, but there's one thing to do your best and give effort, and there's another thing to get the job done. So that's the way I feel about it. You know, it's just, it's, it's, uh, you got to look at, don't you agree that you have to look at, at every player and expect them to do their job? And if they can't do it, then I think you have to look at putting somebody else in there. I've been in the same situations in a group and groups. If a guy is just not doing the job and you, he may be a friend or you're close, but you got to make a decision that's best for the band and the overalls, wherever you're going. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Even in the studio, that's kind of, I'm going to have a story next week and everybody's going to know who it is, but and may not know why. It happened, but and I'm hoping I'm not nailing neg negativity. I'm hoping 
we have a big win and we'll all forget about the bad stuff. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, I'm a I'm an Alabama diehard. I, I want them to win. I want them to dominate. I want Milrow to get out of his funk, and uh, and the players to play like they should be playing for the school and the history of that that program. You know. Yeah, that's what everybody wants. There's nothing. They're making the money, man. They're making the money. Let's play for the love of football. That's why yeah, I got you no, there. I mean, there's nothing that gets the people feeling better about your program than just a good performance. You know, I mean, it's just Alabama fans are frustrated, and 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 I get it. I mean, I you know some are a little harsh, but there is reason to be frustrated. I mean, since the first half of that Georgia game, it has been a struggle for this team. Well, do you know that I'm you know I'm I'm in Georgia. Bro, this has been quiet. I haven't taken any negativity because they know we beat them and uh, they can't say much. Last right. year it was That's right. I mean, last they've year got, it was – Yeah. They've got that hanging over them. No matter how much more they do, they have got – Listen, man, as I've said, and, and we've talked about it, you take Alabama out of the mix, which you can't, just like you couldn't take Ollie out of the mix for Frazier or, you know, all these great – you know, you can't take the Yankees out of the mix for the Dodgers. But if there's no Alabama – When's the last time Georgia lost a football game? They'd, be, they'd probably be on a 60-something game winning streak, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> and they know it. Them. Nobody else has beat them in three or four years. So, And, uh, and I give it to them for going to Texas. I, I don't know what was going on with years. I, I'll be honest. I, I thought Texas was going to – I picked Texas. I mean, I did. I thought I Texas was, well, I let did. Me tell you what was, let me tell you what was going on with yours. That Georgia defensive line got after his rear end, and the Texas offensive line didn't hold up, and he's not mobile, and he started seeing ghosts, buddy. He started you could you could see, man, those feet were 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 moving, and he he didn't have his eyes in the right places, and he got he got rattled. That just goes to show you pressure, bust pipes, and pressure makes good quarterbacks look less than good a lot of times. And look at Kirby where he came, how he, how he cut oh, his yeah. teeth. Man. He ste- he he stepped up to the plate just like a Saban team, and he Absolutely. he he laid the wood on. <laughs> he well, he's the best. The he, Kirby's the best going today. That's my opinion. I, I don't I don't and I don't think it's I don't think it's our you know it's it's. It'll be interesting with Ole Miss. That's going to be their call. Yeah, it's going to come down to you know if they yeah, can I hold like, that momentum. Yeah. yeah, I like Georgia. All right, I got to hit the break, Larry. We'll talk. All right, to you brother. Ha- have a good weekend. Thanks, my friend. All right, it's 930 here. 864, that's 800-481-9964. Free bottles for a limited time. Call 800-481-9964. That's 800-481-9964. Your home for Alabama Crimson Tide football. Tide 100.9 and streaming on the Tide 100.9 app. Live from Ministry Iris Pub, 1925 University Boulevard. They open up at 11 a.m., but I'm already here as part of Fridays at the Free, and it's time for Matt Coulter on NASCAR. Obviously, with me out on Wednesday, we didn't get to have our segment, and uh, then I was going to try to get Matt on yesterday, and he wasn't feeling well. So you know what? Worked out great for us here on Friday at the Free to have uh, Matt Coulter on. Good morning, Matt. Hey, Gary, doesn't it feel good to feel good? <laughs> yeah, man, always um, does. Yeah, I, I hate feel, I hate feeling bad, and I know you do too. I, but my schedule, buddy, when I'm, when I'm not feeling my best, it's tough. So, uh, I laid out in the bed for about 30 hours, but I'm ready to go, man. Let's take on Missouri. Let's take on Miami. Let's go. Yeah, you got to get back up and going too because you got uh, you got – pregame and postgame duties tomorrow for the game but let's get to let's start with nascar and you know somebody's feeling good is joey logano and you and i had an inkling uh when he when he got in uh yeah especially in an even numbered year but uh you know he was out and then uh, alex bowman got uh, disqualified he gets into that eight spot and first rate out of gaze and hey listen i am proud that i picked him i i you know, I and Great put, put puts you behind the eight ball. You took Larson, which you can never go wrong with Kyle Larson. But even Larson said after the after the race, he said, "Man, that twenty two team, they know how to manipulate a race. Nobody does it better in getting the most out of their car, 
fuel mileage. Joey said, in fact, he said he probably thought he had a five top, you know, five five to ten top ten car. Uh, but they just outmaneuvered Paul Wolf, Joey Logano, that twenty two team. Um, there are races where you went on speed and you want to have speed, Matt. You know that, but you don't always have the fastest car. And sometimes you still have an opportunity to win the race. And that's what the 22 team was able to do. And, you know, they didn't need a late caution. They got a little break there. But just pick it up, man. It, what, a, what a huge win. And now he's certainly one of the favorites to take home his third championship. Yeah, it's just so interesting. Uh, cool, kind of, unless you're Alex Bowman. But uh, the way he got in there, quite, quite strange. And uh, Jeff Gordon and the Hendricks guys said, no, nah, nah, we were wrong. Let's take our penalty, and they did. And, boy, just open up the door for Penske and for the 22 driver and Joey Logano. So we'll see how that works out. you got you got four other guys clamoring to get into this final race, and uh, I, that's why this uh, event that's going to take place this week in Miami Homestead is going to be so, so very, very interesting. But uh, I know you picked him, but I certainly wasn't surprised. We discussed it uh, a week ago plus a couple of days that, uh, Logano might just add this fuel to his fire and take off. I still wonder about Hamlin. You know, here he is. He's outside the cut line now. Um, how's he going to handle this stuff? And will that elusive championship? These guys got three Daytona 500 championships and yet has not won the overall championship. So I wonder how those two drivers and many more are going to end up uh, working things out this weekend in Miami. Yeah, uh, back to Las Vegas for just a minute because I know sure. that Dale Jr. had some comments about, you know, uh, William Byron even said it, talking about the 22. So they really didn't have the pace to compete, uh, but they capitalized on on their opportunity. Uh, Dale Jr. was scratching his head about how how the 22 won that race and how they were able to get – and he's done it before this year. How are they in these fuel mileage races is what we're referring to them now. How is that team, of course, we know Penske, um, the engineering there is top notch. Uh, how are they getting more out of their cars in terms of fuel mileage? What, what have they got that other teams are missing? It's a great question. And fortunately, while I was on my back for uh, so long, I watched some NASCAR shows. I can't remember. I'd like to give the correct show to the credit. I don't know if it was. Earnhardt show or Harvick's or maybe it was just the, the general round table that they have. But they asked that very, very same question and they brought up a point I hadn't heard before. And that's that, uh, when Penske gets to the playoffs and fields of 16, they kind of separate, separate a different part of their organization to go and find that little bitty niche or that little bitty piece of horsepower or that piece of torque or, you know, I'm not the most technically inclined guy, but they have a, when it gets to playoff time, Gary, the way I understood it is that they have a certain part of the Penske team that works specifically on finding those those cars, mm-hmm. the Penske cars, a little bit more. And that, that explains everything to me. Wow. Yeah. All right. Now we go to uh, – do what now? Had you heard that before? Yeah. I have. But they, uh, that's, that's the reason Penske was dominant, particularly the 22. Yeah. I mean, it's just way to go for them. Um, all right. Let's get to Miami Homestead. I've got the first pick, but I want you to give us the track report. And, you know, for a number of years, this was the final okay. race. This was the championship race. Well, um, I'm not really sure if it's the specifics of the track or, uh, or the location or whatever, but drivers love Miami Homestead. If you look at the diagram of it, it is a true oval. There is no tri-oval. There is no egg shape. It is a true oval. It's 20 degrees. It, you know, it's not that much different than Vegas in some ways, except it doesn't have the tri-oval. But 20-degree uh, bankings in turns one and two, three and four, and only uh, four degrees pretty much stri- straight on the back and front straightaways. Uh, it's an asphalt track, and I think NASCAR raced their first event there in 1999. But um, I can't tell you, you read a lot, a lot of clothes from the drivers, and they all love this track. So that that adds to a lot of the anticipation considering the playoffs as well. Yeah, it does. And, uh, you know, let's get to our picks. Obviously, Logano is uh, is in the Final Four, and he said, listen, he said it's a huge advantage. He didn't mince words 
Matt, he said the fact that, you know, we can start doing setup for, for Phoenix – uh, is a huge advantage for us. For other drivers, uh, they're going to be, you know, they're going to be going all out, including his teammate Ryan Blaney, uh, Kyle Larson. But you said the guy, and uh, you know, is he going to win a championship? I don't know, but he's got a great track record at this at this race, and the pressure is on. So I'm going to take the 11. I'm going to take Denny Hamlin. Well, way to go! I would have taken him too. But here's another guy that I've been thinking about all week long that I'm going to take. And we really should be second in the championship race right now and really throughout the season. Unless maybe I picked him on a uh, road course. Well, I'm talking enough about Christopher Bell. And by the way, you, by virtue of only having three races left and a 5-2 lead, I can take my shot now because oh, the best yeah. I can do yeah. is the So I'm going I'm to pick Christopher Bell and see how he turns out. Well, he's he's won he's won at Homestead, right? I think he won last year, didn't he? Yeah. Uh, I have to look it up. I don't have it okay. in front of me, but okay. I think uh, he, I think yeah, but he's yeah. I, I like but, listen. But Christopher he had, Bell can drive. He can drive anywhere. You know. He yeah, and he had a lot of Bell. speed. They had they were yeah. one of those cars that had a ton of speed at Las Vegas. Him, uh, Byron, Larson, and some others. And uh, as I said, I think a lot of people in uh, and getting back to. Logano again, and, and you laid it out pretty well. But um, Junior's, you know, Junior never won a championship. As great a driver as he was, his major issue, um, and he had Joey on his podcast, so I don't think it's personal against Joey. He just said it, just you know, and a lot of people. I heard, I heard uh, Stewart, Tony Stewart, on with Kevin Harvick saying this is why he got out. He just doesn't like the way NASCAR has gone. But Junior's. Uh, argument toward against Logano was hey he didn't even make the didn't even make the eight you know he didn't even make the eight he gets in on a disqualification um and then he wins the next race and now <laughs> you know now he's the favorite or certainly one of the favorites but that's all you can do is race in the system that you have right right Matt? and right and, I don't you know I I guess I would understand their point better if they could tell me a better way to do it <laughs> yeah you know, I mean, that's the way it's set up. Uh, yeah. He was DQ. So, wanted to say, okay, well, we're not going to worry about that. Uh, no, they did exactly what the, do the rules need to be changed. I don't think in this instance they do. Do you? Not really. I mean, like you said, the guy got DQ. They didn't, they didn't appeal it. They knew they made a mistake. And it's not like Joey got in at number one. He got in with the eighth spot, and he went out and won the race. I mean, if he doesn't win the race, then we're not having this conversation. So, again, I mean, you know, Harvick was known as a closer. Obviously, you know, Dale Sr. could close races with the best of them. Uh, but Joey Logano is is one of those guys that when you get to this time of the year, uh, you give him a crack, and he'll – He'll bust the door down, man. He's just got that. He's oh, got that he ability. It. We saw that in his first championship run. He'll we sure did. At Matt Kenseth, uh, he'll yeah. wreck it. You know, oh, he, he will. He, no, listen. He's got those. He wears those glasses when he gets out of the car, and he's tall and kind of. Uh, I, I forget what uh, how Dale Junior referred to him, but not gangly, but something like that. Just kind of awkward. But man, behind he's that lanky. wheel, he yeah, he behind that wheel, he is a. He is a, a, a master. All right, so you've got Bell, and I've got Hamlin at, at Miami Homestead. Another big NASCAR story this week that I know <clears throat> warms your heart. Bobby Allison got awarded that victory back in 1971 yeah. that he had long argued was his, and now he has 85 wins, which moves him one ahead of Darrell Waltrip, his longtime, not won't say nemesis, but rival certainly in the in the late 70s, early 80s. Uh, as the number four all-time winningest driver in the Cup Series. Uh, they had the ceremony up in Charlotte this week. So uh, I know you were glad to see that, and, and I know the Allisons are, are are thrilled with that, because not because um, they wanted something that wasn't earned, but, you know, Bobby Allison had long argued that he deserved that victory to be counted. Yeah, I was really happy to read that, and it's so deserving and by the way, it also helps that it separates them from Daryl Waltrip. I mean, they were rivals on the mm -hmm. track like no others, and there were rivalries off the track concerning those two. I did Al Browning. You remember the great sports writer who was the yeah. uh, sports editor for Tuscaloosa News? 
he and I did a video on Bobby Allison back when that was a thing. And um, I sat in his den. We did like two and three hour interviews with him to make this project really cool. I banked in fast turns. I think you can still find it some places. But anyway, uh, that was a real bone of contention for him. And he said, man, I beat Patty by three car lengths. They said they they changed the format up or they did something. But uh, that's one of those things that you're really, really glad that they finally repaired. They finally made it right. Because there was no question he won the race. But there was somebody that said, oh, we're doing it under this different format or whatever. But finally, NASCAR, it only took them, what, uh, 30, 30, 40, almost 40 years. No, over 50. Yeah. Is it over 50? 50 Yeah, that's right. It was was in the 70s. So, anyway, uh, I'm glad to see that. And uh, many of you know how close I am uh, with Bobby Allison and the Alabama gang. That one, you're right. You said heartwarming. That's exactly what it did to me. All right, Matt. As I said, you're going to be on uh, Tide and uh, Bear coverage tomorrow, pregame, postgame. Yeah. Alabama, man. Um, I don't know other way to say it. I, I, I know there's a lot of people talking about, well, you know, nine and three. Would you? St-? I don't see it. I think Alabama is up against it. They lose one more, in my opinion, they're out of the playoff. I think they got to run the table because uh, if they do that, one of those wins would include a win at LSU. I think ten and two, they're going to be fine. But I don't see any margin for error. This is the biggest game of the season. I mean, their backs are against the wall. It's homecoming. Uh, they haven't played well or played complimentary football for 60 minutes in a game now probably since the Wisconsin game as far as an entire game. And uh, Missouri's capable. I don't know, again, what the situation yep. is with Cook at quarterback and Noah at running back. But uh, how do you see this matchup tomorrow afternoon? You know, it's uh, like the Forrest Gump thing. You you never know what you're going to get. It's like about you don't know what you're going to get from this Alabama football team, except I guess they've been consistently with errors and some disciplinary problems the last couple of games. I guess if that's consistency, that's not the right way. But uh, I think this staff has uh, had more difficulty than we anticipated, especially after the start against the Georgia Bulldogs. Uh, adjusting to the level of play in the SEC, I think that's it. I think it starts with the board. It goes to its assistant coaching staff, and uh, and it goes down from there. So uh, Alabama's got to bow up. And uh, the criticism uh, that was received three weeks ago, four weeks ago, I didn't think was so much earned. But now it's spot on. You know, this coaching staff's got to step up. It, it, it's time to go out and produce a solid performance where you don't have double-digit penalties, and you don't have plays that are made on emotion instead of skill and instead of discipline. So uh, you're right. I think this is the biggest game. If they come out and play sloppy again, and uh, you know, I don't think there's going to be any drastic measures taken. But a lot of fans who are already off the bandwagon are going to continue to jump off. It's a it's a huge game. They they need even if they win by seven to ten, they need to play well and play physical. Would you agree? Absolutely. I I I you know. You said a lot there, Matt, and I'm I'm dead on with you. And that you need a good performance. I mean, is yeah. there's a lot of questions right now. There seems to be more questions than answers. Fans are frustrated, but nothing, especially going into bye week with an extra week to prepare to go to Baton Rouge. You play well tomorrow. You put together a 60 minute game, offensively, defensively, in the kicking game, and you're impressive. And let's say you wind up winning this thing convincingly. Um, the mindset next week and the vibe around Tuscaloosa is going to be completely different. I mean, it is going to yeah. be so much more positive. But you you limp into that bye week, even if you win the game, like you said, Matt, and you don't look good doing it, and you look up in the fourth yeah. quarter with six minutes to go and it's a one-score game, people are going to be negative, and they're going to say, man, we got no chance going to Baton Rouge. So, you know, not only do you need to win the game, I, I'm, I'm with you. I think you need to play well. I think you need yeah, – exactly. you don't need 15 penalties for 115 yards. You know, you don't need guys losing their cool and, and, and doing stupid things on the field. And, and you know, you need Jalen to, to look like the Jalen that he's capable exactly. of being. Yeah. And, and, you know, and you need the defense getting off the field on – on uh, on third and medium and third and long and and yeah that's what they need they need to play well and if they do everything's gonna be fine and if they don't it's gonna be uh it's gonna be you know like it is right now a lot of angst and well and, and you said something, you said you said something real quick there said, uh, about Jalen Milrow he's got to play well too because that we all know that team revolves around the four and sure. if he plays well and the team plays well I think a, a, a lot of the criticism criticism will subside. Uh, still a lot to come maybe in the future, but play well, play physical, and Monroe has a big game. I think Alabama will be all right when we talk next week. 
All right, Matt, we'll uh, enjoy the coverage tomorrow, and uh, we'll see what happens at uh, Miami Homestead on Sunday. Hey, y'all come see us at Walk-Ons tomorrow after the game. Big time, big fun, roll tide. Thank you, Gary. Thanks, Matt. All right, 9.50 here on the Gary Harris Show, the YMCA of Tuscaloosa. 2313th Street downtown is a, a great facility. Like I like to say all the time, the Y is ready for you when you're ready for the Y. It's just that simple. Get by and join today. I've been a member for over 20 years, and I love it. Not just the workout facility itself, but the people, the community of people there. I always look forward to going. Uh, when I go, it's usually around midday after my radio show before I go to the TV station. And there's just people that I look forward to seeing every time I'm working out there. It's that kind of community. You'll enjoy it. Get by and uh, talk to them. They'll give you a tour and uh, get you signed up. The YMCA of Tuscaloosa. All right, we're going to be back to wrap up this first hour of the Gary Harris Show coming up at 10 o'clock in the hour number two. Chase Goodbread from the Tuscaloosa News and our Bama football trivia contest. We're giving away that uh, Greg Gamble, Trent Richardson print from the 2011 Iron Bowl, and I've got it out on my Twitter feed. You can see a picture of it there, a picture of the picture at Gary Harris underscore WV. Tide Tailgate Show is presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors, Skyland Boulevard, Tuscaloosa, and the new location, Highway 280, Birmingham, online at academy.com. If you haven't already, you've got to try Tuscaloosa's unique breakfast, brunch, and lunch concept, Brick and Spoon, downtown Tuscaloosa, Timerson Square. It's fresh food with a Cajun flair featuring a full bar with Build Your own Bloody Marys and Mimosas. Open daily, 7 a.m. until 2 p.m. Available for after-hours events, rehearsal dinners, receptions, and birthdays. They offer brunch and lunch catering. Call Brick and Spoon at 205-345-5551 for more information. Los Tarascos has been serving Mexican favorites like burritos, fajitas, and quesadillas since 1999. Their new location is at 4100 Owen Parkway in Northport. And of course, you can find Los Tarascos in Tuscaloosa at 110 Skyland Boulevard. The bar area feature big screen television so you can enjoy your favorite sporting events. Los Tarascos features daily happy hours for his clients. Remember M for money and Mezreno. If it has a logo on it, call me. 205-800-8000. Tide 100.9 Tuscaloosa weather. The weather stays unseasonably warm today. Mostly sunny with a high at 86. Fair tonight, the low 58. Tomorrow, mostly sunny, the high 84. Sunday, partly sunny, a small chance of a shower. Sunday's high at 80. I'm James Spann on the ABC 3340 Weather Center on Tide 100.9. It's 64 degrees in Tuscaloosa. Covering University of Alabama sports, as well as the national and local scene as well. The Gary Harris Show, only on Tide 100.9 and streaming on the Tide 100.9 app. Oh, yeah. 955 year old TGIF edition of the Gary Harris Show, live from Ennis Free Irish Pub as part of Fridays at the Free. We're winding it down. In hour number two, we're going to uh, give away that uh, print that I've been talking about this morning. We're going to do it at 10 o'clock instead of 10.30 this morning, so get ready. We're going to be interviewing Chase uh, Goodbread from the Tuscaloosa News, and we'll give away that Man of Steel, Trent Richardson, 2011 Iron Bowl print, Alabama 42, Auburn 14. We gave away the Steve Skipper version a couple of weeks ago. Now this week we're giving away the Greg Gamble version, so get ready for that coming up at 10 o'clock and uh, also in that second hour my sec point spread predictions as i said coming off a poor week after i had a really good week man it's tough picking these games in the sec right uh it's just uh really 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 hard but uh but i will uh, i'll give it another go so we're going to wrap up hour number one live from ns free Irish pub the second hour is on the way we'll get it started with chase goodbread from the tuscaloosa news and our bama football trivia contest and doors open here at Innisfree at 11 a.m. They'll be open for lunch. It's the game day menu this Friday. Since it's a home game, there won't be the Lucky Lunch Meet and 3, but they'll have all the other game day favorites on the menu ready to go at 11 a.m. this morning. All right, I'll continue broadcasting live from Innisfree Irish Pub. Another hour is on the way. Keep it dialed in at Tide 100.9 FM and 1230 a.m. WTBC, your home for University of Alabama Crimson Tide Sports.
Shop online at TuscaloosaCDJR.com. At Tuscaloosa Chrysler, Jeep, Dodge, Ram, you pick it out, it will work it out. Roll tight. The Alabama Securities Commission protects you from financial fraud. Anyone asking you for investment money must be licensed. You're careful with your money. Fraudsters aren't. Before you invest, call our hotline at 1-800-222-1253 to verify the licensing of the person making an offer and the product. Don't lose your... Four, that's 800-481-9964. Free bottles for a limited time. Call 800-481-9964. That's 800-481-9964. WTBC Tuscaloosa and W265CG Tuscaloosa, a town square media station. Tide 100.9 and streaming on the Tide 100.9 app. From the Fox Sports Studios in Los Angeles. Here's Nick Cope. On Thursday Night Football, the Rams beat the Vikings 30-20 to and Los Angeles got their weapons back. Here comes Cup in motion to balance it out two by two. Stafford has a snap. Four-man rush, pressure in his face, goes out the left side, ducks the rush, flips to the end zone, cut, cut, Cooper Cup from Matthew Stafford, a primetime edition of Nine and Dime. Rams Radio Network, Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua returned from injury last night. Cup caught five passes, including that touchdown. Nakua led with seven catches for 106 yards. In the NBA, Clay Thompson dropped 22 points in his Mavericks debut as Dallas beat the Spurs 120 to 109. Julius Randle and Anthony Edwards combined for 65 as the Timberwolves just got by the Kings 117 to 115 in Sacramento. The Gary Harris Show. You see him host Tider Insider TV, Crimson Tide Kickoff, play-by-play for Alabama Sports, and Sports Director for WVUA 23. It's time for the Gary Harris Show on your home for Alabama Sports, Tide 100.9, and streaming on the Tide 100.9 app. All right, here we go. Hour number two of the Gary Harris Show live from Ministry Irish Pub. 1925 University Boulevard, part of Fridays at the Free. They open the doors at 11 a.m., and they'll be ready to serve you. All right, we're going to get to Chase Goodbread from the uh, Tuscaloosa News in just a moment. First, though, it's time for our Bama Football Trivia Contest presented by T-Town Menswear and T-Town Gallery in the University Mall. And this entire segment, when I'm talking to Chase Goodbread, Chase Brumfeld back at the uh, station is going to be qualifying you. And uh, we'll get all our qualifiers like we do every week. And then at the end of the show, we'll give you the answer, and we'll roll that electronic uh, roulette wheel. If you're the 14th qualifier, you'll be 14, so forth. I think last week we had 30 qualifiers. Uh, Our question today, and again, I'm going to keep it pretty simple, and even though there is some history between Alabama and Missouri, there's not, you know, a couple SEC championship games and so forth, I'm going to go, since this is the first year of Kalen DeBoer's tenure at Alabama, I'm going to go back to Nick Saban's first year in 2007 and our trivia question is who was nick saban's first starting quarterback at the university of alabama who was nick saban's first starting quarterback at the university of alabama in 2007 that's our trivia question call now on the pinnacle park at north river hotline at 205-342-9904 again the number 205-342-9904 Nine nine zero four. We're going to qualify you this entire segment. I'll try while I'm talking to Chase to also, and Chase will as well, check the app messages if you want to send us an answer there. And uh, also, sometimes people will send me messages on social media, and I try to check those as well. Again, the trivia question for that uh, Greg Gamble, Man of Steel, Trent Richardson print from the 2011 Iron Bowl, 42-14. to 14. And our question is... Who was Nick Saban's first starting quarterback back in 2007? Again, we're going to give away that beautiful print from Greg Gamble, and we'll do that at the end of the show. Okay, that's the trivia question, 205-342-9904. Now let me bring on my good friend Chase Goodbread, Tuscaloosa News columnist, and uh, wrote a great column this week that we're going to dive into. Good morning, Chase. Good morning, Gary. How are you doing? Yeah, doing great, man. Uh, I read your column this week on the mimicking of the jump shot on the quarterback sneak. And obviously that question was asked and in the press conference. But I got the feeling reading your column that you felt like maybe it was symbolic of some other issues on this team, what's going on with this team. First of all, uh, we've been told that the players don't do anything that they're not coached to do. 
So if that was the case, what were they doing? Yeah, uh, certainly it came as a surprise to me as I wrote that Nick Sheridan said, essentially said that play was coached exactly how it's looked. Uh, that's weren't his exact words, but close enough. He, he said nothing you, nothing you see on the field isn't coached. Um, so, yeah, I, I, it certainly looked spontaneous to me when it happened, right? Um, I'll take Sheridan's word for it, though, uh, that they that they made that part of the play, which you know, which I just I don't I don't I don't get it, um, don't understand it, don't see the point of it. But uh, you know, that's that's about the size of it. I, I did not, you know, and and Travis Ryer, who uh, who I do a podcast with weekly, he made a, a really good point too. So you know, every once in a while, we've seen Jalen Milrow get stuffed on a sneak but not tackled and try to bounce it outside. That's happened before. Mm-hmm. Um, what happens what if he what happens if he gets stuffed but breaks away and tries to bounce right? Wow, I know. If if it is by design, Chase, the only thing I can figure is it's some type of diversion or or or, or decoy. I mean, I I don't know um exactly what the mindset would be i'm like you i mean it, to most people it looks silly but if it was coached it has to be a reason and maybe it was designed to i don't know uh catch the officials attention catch you know a, some somebody on tennessee's defense's attention i mean there's got to be a reason for it i'm not I, i'm not a college football coach but i fail to see the strategy is this symbolic of a a bigger issue with this team um again it's a first year it's a transition i might have um underrated uh hadn't been through a transition since 2007 maybe i underrated just how difficult these transitions are but it just seems like from from week to week there's more questions and answers when you watch this football team play and uh we're seven games in they're certainly not out of anything yet at this point but the play has been uneven you look back to complete game performances Western Kentucky and, and maybe Wisconsin, and that's it. Uh, every other game, um, even the Georgia game where they had the big lead, it's been like pulling teeth trying to get a win, and there have been penalties. There have been mistakes. There have been uh, mental errors. There have been, you know, issues where there looks like there's a lack of discipline on the team. What what do you make of, of this first year so far to Kalen DeBoer? Well, I, I certainly think, Fifteen penalties is a lot more indicative of a of a discipline concern than you know the the jump shot play. Um, you know, if, if the players on the jump shot play had acted on their own, then I would say, yeah, uh, there's there's definitely a discipline issue there, no question about it. The fact that it was coached, I, I think, uh, casts a different light on it. Uh, but the penalties overall. Um, you know, to to me is is the overriding factor. You know, not some you know not some silly quarterback sneak where something goofy happened. Um, you know, they've got to get that cleaned up. Uh, the 15 yarder on Kendrick Law was absolutely devastating. Not that not that fourth and seven is especially manageable. That's a bad situation too. But but fourth and seven is bad. Fourth and 22 is impossible. So you know that penalty hurt a whole lot and. You know, they've just um, they've ruined some chances. It's been a couple weeks where it looked like the offense is fine and the defense needs to pick it up, right? That was the case against Vanderbilt. That was the case against South Carolina. And then you, you get to Tennessee and it flips around, and the defense holds up fairly well. Obviously had a rough second half, but overall, defense probably played well enough to win, and the offense just completely sputters. Uh, so, you know, they, they've, there's definitely some, uh, there's definitely some soul searching going on in the football building. I don't think there's any question. In game management. I want to ask you about that, Chase, because obviously when something doesn't work, you question it, but it just seems like too just pulling the right strings has not been something that coach DeBoer has been able to do. You go back to the Vanderbilt game. They score the touchdown to make it a five-point game. I, I get it. You got three timeouts left, but you really hadn't stopped that offense 
and you don't even take a crack at an onside kick. And I had argued at the time that I would have tried the onside kick. Number one, I'm not sure you could stop them, which they didn't. Number two, if Vanderbilt has the ball at midfield, they're more apt to me to run the ball three downs and kick it, try to kick you deep, and you get the ball back. I mean, possession of the ball is the only way you can win the game. Um, they kick it deep. They never get it back. Uh, Vanderbilt's able to run out the clock. And I think if Vanderbilt has the ball at midfield, maybe they – are, again, like I said, just going to try to run it three plays and kick you deep. When they got it at their own 18 yard line, they were trying to make first downs. They did not want to punt the ball back. In the South Carolina game, you know, uh, Jeremy Bernard said, nobody told me not to score. Jeremy Bernard said, nobody told me not to score. So I scored. Well, you gave South Carolina a ball back, which is the only way they could have won the game. You know, if he just falls down there, uh, they run out the clock and you almost lose that game. Uh, Tennessee, third quarter, you've got a lead. You're at the 48 yard line, fourth and one. You don't go for it. You kick it. Punt it deep inside the 10. They go 90-something yards, and that really turns the game. And there at the end of the game, you go for it, as you mentioned, on 4th and 22 from your own 18-yard line with three timeouts. It just seems like when Coach DeBoer makes a decision, it's just not it's not working out. It, there have been a couple spots in that stretch where you're talking about where I, I scratched my head as well. A couple spots I think are more understandable. Um, you know, the 4th and 22... I can somewhat see the logic that DeBoer used when he explained that. He basically said, look, we were down four. We had to have a touchdown either way. Um, take a shot at fourth and 22. Maybe you get that. You get lucky. You go down and score. You're going to have to have a stop either way, whether you mm-hmm. punt it or, or, or whether you go for it on fourth and 22. Now, uh, the difference being Tennessee was able to kick a relatively easy field goal coming off of that fourth and 22 failure that made it a seven point game and instead of a four point game so now if you're alabama you run down the field you can score a touchdown uh because you failed on fourth and 22 you haven't won the game you've only tied the game with a touchdown um so you know those are all things that that you know get exacerbated in losses um you know, South Carolina was wild too. The way that went down, um, I didn't. I didn't quite. And I wrote this. I didn't quite understand why there were three linebackers on the hands team on the onside nobody, kick. South no, Carolina no, no, recovered. Nobody did. Nobody. Um, and and I and I'll say this about the hands team: you can't just stick eleven wide receivers up there because it's a physical play. Um, you got um, if you got all wide receivers and all DBs up front, um, you're liable to just get blown off. Uh, blown off the ball physically. You also don't want a receiver at the bottom of the pile when a bigger guy's uh, trying to rip, you know, rip one out of your hands. You know, where the rest can't even see what's going on because the pile is so big. So I get it that you want a few big guys on the hands team, but to me, Gary, the only big guys that should be on the hands team are tight ends. That's it. Um, now that being said. That didn't end up costing Alabama because the linebackers that were on the hands team didn't touch the ball. Um, it was actually Quavis and ends. Boots. Yeah, yeah, two tight ends. And I'm all right with tight ends being up front. But my point is, if I'm, if I'm South Carolina and I saw Alabama lined up for, for that onside kick, I see uh, Q Robinson and Jihad Campbell not only, on, not only on the front line but right beside each other. It's yeah. not like they were even spread around. I'm kicking it right at those two, like my chances. Um, they ended up kicking it elsewhere and recovered it anyway. Uh, but that was that was one of the things I noticed that was kind of a kind of a head scratcher for me. Yeah, I talked to Tommy Wilcox after that. He just said, you know, Coach Bryant would have wide receivers, defensive backs, quarterbacks. I mean, he would have he would have hands people uh, out there. But uh, again, uh, it is a first season. It is a transition. But we're we are where we are, and. Um, the bottom line is, Chase, I don't think this team has any margin for error left. I've had some other people tell me, well, you know, if you uh, go nine and three and this happens and that happens, uh, I, I think that I think it might even be in doubt if you're 10 and two. But uh, how do you feel about that? The fact that uh, with these two losses, seven games in, that they've got to uh, probably went out to get into the college football playoff. Is that, is that I agree. Stand? Yeah, absolutely. They definitely got to win out to get in the football playoff. That doesn't mean there's never going to be a three loss team in the playoff. I think eventually there will be, um, probably not this year, but we'll see that sooner or later. Uh, but to me, Gary, if you're, if you're sitting at three losses, 
you're on the outside looking in on the playoff in much the same way that you used to be on the outside looking in if you had two losses in the four-team playoff, right? And they right. And, and by the way, in 10 years of the four-team playoff, there was never a two-loss team that ever got in, not once. So, and, and I, I do think we'll see, we'll see a three-loss team here and there, but it's going to be rare, and I don't see it happening this year either. Tomorrow, uh, clearly it's the biggest game of the year, number one, because it's the next one, number two, because uh, it's homecoming, and, and as we've just spoke about, Alabama has no margin for error. We don't know about Missouri health-wise, if Cook's going to play, if Noel's going to play. Uh, if they do, they won't be 100%. I mean, it seems like this Missouri team is ripe for the picking for Alabama. How do you see this matchup tomorrow? Cook's absence, and he's doubtful he's not out, right? So there's always a chance he gives yeah, it a go. A Especially after One, what he did last week. <laughs> sure, sure. And, and I think it, given that he's doubtful and given that he apparently practiced very uh, lightly, very gingerly in, uh, this week for Missouri, if he does give it a go, he won't be 100%. I think that's fair to say. Um, but his his absence or diminished capacity, whichever the case may be, that's a big deal. Uh, I don't know if you watched how much of that Auburn game you got to catch last week, but when he was gone and off to the hospital to get that MRI, Missouri oh, couldn't move the ball a lick. No, yeah. none. Um, so it's a different football team without him, Gary. And so for that reason and that reason alone, I would say, yeah, if he, if he doesn't play at all, Missouri should be ripe for the picking for Alabama. Um, if he does give it a go and he's uh, – Somewhat effective, and he, he could he could give Alabama problems because he's that good, and and Luther Burden is uh, is that good a receiver. Yeah, no doubt. You're right on Cook. I, I knew he was good. He's better even with the, what I thought because I don't pay that much attention to Missouri. Last week, if he doesn't go out, I think they win the game by a couple touchdowns. If he doesn't come back, they lose the game clearly. So, yeah, it's big for for Bama. What other thought, Chase? Before I let you go, big picture, not just Alabama. But I think we're all having to adjust the way we think about college football. You know, we see Indiana at 7-0. and We see what Vanderbilt's doing. Both went heavy into the portal. Indiana with a first-year head coach in Kirk Signetti. You're seeing power programs that, you know, aren't what they were even just a couple, three years ago. It's just where we're at, right? I mean, I think a lot of people thought the portal and NIL would, would boost the power programs. But what it's done, it's opened it up for everybody else. And it's week to week. I mean, you can't compare scores. You can't look at what somebody did two weeks ago. You've just got to try to figure out the, a way to win the game you're playing that week, right? Can't look ahead. Can't worry about anything to pass. If you don't focus on what you're doing that Saturday, you can get beat. And that seems to be for anybody in the country. I think that's fair. I, I think to me, we're going to see it get crazier the later the seasons go on, uh, not just this year, but going forward. Part of the reason for that is what you have going on with the portal, with the top tier teams. Yeah. You'll see a star player jump in the portal and go to another school once in a while. Quinchin Judkins from Ole Miss to Ohio state would be certainly one example for the most part though, Gary, volume wise in terms of numbers, most of these kids jumping in the portal, our second stringers, right on the on, or third stringers on a uh, you know on a top tier team, and they're going to play a little bit more somewhere else. Well, what that does is it guts your depth. If you're a if you're an Alabama, if you're a you know a Clemson, a Georgia, whoever, um, and what ends up happening is that 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 costs you in November, right? Because it's the end of the season where you need those guys because somebody's gotten hurt, right? Injuries happen all over the place. And, uh, you know, if your second string gets gutted by the portal, you get into November and, and a bunch of your starters are injured. Now you're trying to get by with threes instead of twos. I think that's, I, I think that's something to watch for, too, as, as we move forward toward the end of the year when injuries mount. No doubt about it, Chase. Great, uh, great stuff. And one thing is for sure, as long as the TV ratings are what they are and as long as people are, are supporting college football, whatever is lurking under the surface right now with the ratings uh, and the money that's coming in, <laughs> I don't – you know, it's like the question, we got to do something about the – 
the NIL or something about the portal. The problem, Chase, and I know I told you I'd let you get off the line, but the problem seems to be to me that, again, as long as the ratings are what they are, as long as the money's pouring in, I hear a lot of word salad about we need to do something to fix it, but I don't see anybody trying to fix anything. Do you? No, no. The NCAA is is only you know the NCAA is is court weary and should be because they've beaten in court. They've been beaten in court left and right uh, for years now over over you know player empowerment issues, revenue sharing, et cetera. Um, so I think the NCAA to some extent is is a little shell shocked, maybe a little scared to make a move. You try to enforce something here and there, and the next thing you know. Uh, you're paying lawyers uh, to defend you in a lawsuit, yeah. right? Yeah. That happened with the that happened with the Tennessee situation. Um, so, and, and so, if the NCAA is a little gun shy to, to um, you know, really deliver some enforcement in the NIL space, well, then then you're turning to Congress, and Congress is Congress Congress ain't uh, ain't going to be around to help, Gary. I, I, anybody. Anybody waiting for Congress to solve the NCAA's NIL problems needs to uh, quit holding their breath. You pegged it, buddy. All right, let everybody know where they can find you on social media and and Tuscaloosa News and and all that good stuff. Yeah, TuscaloosaNews.com. Colin Gay, our new beat writer, is doing a fantastic job. Emily Smar, our new basketball beat writer, doing a great job as well. Great to have them on board. They're uh, relatively new hires. I'm looking forward to working with them. Uh, going to be writing columns on football. I'm going to be writing the columns, of course, on football and basketball here pretty soon. Going to write one from the from the basketball season opener on November 4th, as a matter of fact. And uh, the Twitter feed is at Chase Goodbread. I appreciate it, Gary. All right, Chase. Thank you. And hey, listen up. You got Crimson Cover coming up tonight on uh, WVA 23 too, right? Chase is gone. <laughs> All right. Crimson Cover TV with uh, Chase Goodbread and uh, John Copeland and Mike Parker every Friday night on WVUA 23 as well. All right. Uh, we got to get to the break, and uh, let's shut down the phone lines. All right, listen. I just got uh, five qualifiers from the app that I sent to uh, that I sent to Chase Brumfeld, not Chase Goodbread, and also I got some social media messages. We're getting everybody qualified, but we're going to shut the phone lines down. So, Chase, let's go ahead and get to the break, and uh, we'll come back, and we can take some phone calls. And then at the bottom of the hour, we've got um, Brett Pritchard with the Auburn Report. Offering you 100% satisfaction and appointments set around your schedule. Give us a call for all your steam cleaning needs, 205-553-9460, Houston Hydro Steam. Quality work you can stand on. Tide 100.9, Tuscaloosa weather. The weather stays unseasonably warm today, mostly sunny with a high at 86. Fair tonight, the low 58. Tomorrow, mostly sunny, the high 84. Sunday, partly sunny, a small chance of a shower. Sunday's high at 80. I'm James Spann on the ABC 3340 Weather Center on Tide 100.9. It's 70 degrees in Tuscaloosa. Need to know what's going on with the Crimson Tide? Then subscribe to our YouTube channel for exclusive content on your home for Alabama sports. Tide 100.9 and streaming on the Tide 100.9 app. All right, 1026. Welcome back into the Gary Harris Show live from Ministry Irish Pub. Ellis, our friend from Tennessee, has finally found his way in. I kept telling Chase to tell you to come to to this door here but you you got in he's hanging out with us you know normally we have three or four people come by they're going to open the doors at 11 by the way for uh lunch again no lucky lunch today it's the game home weekends it's the game day menu so but still plenty of great food and beverages beginning at 11 a.m here at ennis free iris pub all right let's go back over to the uh, studio with uh chase brumfeld chase did you get uh all the qualifiers that i sent you while you were taking them on the phone uh yes i did you got the ones off the app? Uh, yes, I did. I got everyone on the app, the phone lines, and the ones uh, that you had sent me um, directly to you. That From social media, yeah. All right, so again, uh, thank you for, and I'm glad I was able to get to the app messages this time. They The app kind of updates on my email when it updates, but uh, Ethan, we got you qualified. Matt, we got you qualified. Q, we got you qualified. Bryce, we got you qualified. Sherry, we got you qualified all on the app. Hang on. I may have some more updates for you. Um, no, I think this is pretty much the same qualifiers. So, 
And Justin says, hey, I missed it. What's the trivia? Well, Justin, you did miss it. It's too late. We've closed it down now. So 20, you sent me a text, Chase, 26 qualifiers. That's what we had? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, 26, 30 last week, 26 this week. So that's a, a good number. At the end of the show, we will... Give the answer, and, of course, uh, we'll roll that electronic roulette wheel. 1 through 26, you'll have a number assigned to your name. And when the ball stops rolling, whatever number it's on, will win that print. A uh, Gill won last week, uh, which was the Roman Harper print from the 2005 Tennessee game. I have not gotten up with Gill yet. I've, I've been, It's been crazy this week. I'm sitting here telling Ellis during the break, you know, between not feeling well on Wednesday and uh, just getting behind on things, but we'll get everybody caught up, and I'll get Gil his print, and we'll get the winner this week, uh, their print. Now, again, because I saw, uh, like, Hugh, for instance, uh, I think uh, qualified from Indianapolis. I am not going to ship any prints. The first year we did this, I, tr- I tried that. It doesn't work. So if you win and you live out of town, we'll either have to set up something up with you when you come to town for a game or – a relative or somebody like that, or we'll just have to, you know, try to give it to someone else. Because if you can't pick it up or have someone pick it up for you, I can't get it to you. So I just want to go ahead and say that. Uh, I don't certainly don't want to tell you not to qualify, but I do want you to know that uh, I can't ship any prints. All right, it is, um, or any of the other items that we've given away. We've given away footballs. We've given away autographed gloves and uh, game-worn gloves and things like that. No shipping. All right, it's 1029. We're going to get to the break. Uh, before we do, though, I do want to remind you again about uh, golf this weekend. It's beautiful. Football, too, but Tall Pines Golf Club, a hidden gym over in East Tuscaloosa, is uh, ready for play, public play. Just give them a call to make a tee time. You'll love the golf course. Uh, it's beautiful. It's scenic. Uh, the new greens have come in nicely. 205-556-1232. 205-556. Many Tuscaloosa customers are searching online for your type of business. It's quick, easy, and free. Visit mylocalcustomers.com. That's mylocalcustomers.com. You see him on WVUA 23 covering sports. And on Tider Insider TV on Tuesday nights. Don't miss a minute of the Gary Harris Show. Weekdays from 9 to 11 on Tide 100.9. All right, 1032, welcome back into the Gary Harris Show live from Ennis Free Irish Pub. And so far today, we've only had one person slip in, and that's Ellis from Tennessee. They'll open the doors at 11, but as I said, if you want to slide by a little early, you can hang out with us and uh, get ready to to start a great weekend of college football. Speaking of college football, uh, Brent Pritchard is our Auburn, Auburn analyst from the uh, Auburn Blitz, does a great job for us every Friday here on the show talking Auburn Tiger sports. Good morning, Brett. How are you? Good, Gary. How are you, buddy? Doing great, man. Good to have you. Uh, I did a little – I ran a little clip with uh, Hugh Freeze last night on my sports show on TV, and um, – and I said what a lot of people are saying, that Auburn is one of the most interesting teams in the country. I mean, nobody that looks at that team feels like that's a should be a 2-5 and five team, 0-4 oh in the SEC, uh, but they just can't win. And um, he said in the clip that I ran that, you know, we got to believe in each other. We've just got to keep trusting, and, and i got to do a better job of calling the plays that get us over the hump. I guess the question now is coming off another kind of meltdown against Missouri. Can they get over the hump tomorrow night at Kentucky? Hey, you know, that's a good question. Gary, I'm going to throw this stat out. It's one of the most unbelievable stats that I've seen ever covering college football. There's uh, 27 uh, FBS offenses that average 6.5 yards per play or more on the season, and there's 29 FBS defenses that allow five yards or less per play. Only seven of those combined are doing both. Army, wow. Indiana, Ohio State, Ole Miss, Kansas State, Texas, and Auburn. Here's the difference. The combined record of those other teams, 36-4, Auburn's 2-5. Holy they cow. Are, one of seven, one of seven teams that do both of those on both sides of the ball, like you just said. The, the only thing that, that's not in this stat is how many turnovers. And Auburn is minus 10 in turnovers on the year. And everybody else on that list is at least plus two or three, uh, even maybe even higher than that. So 
the Arkansas and the uh, uh, and the Oklahoma, actually the Cal game, the Arkansas and the Cal game were ten combined turnovers in those games, and then the Oklahoma two double digit leads in the fourth quarter. I, I just don't know, Gary. It's like this team does not know how to finish, and it's like they're waiting for something bad to happen. Uh, they can't close the deal. They had the ball against Oklahoma with a chance to put the game away, uh, and they come away with no points. And they had the ball with a chance to, to put up Missouri away. I mean, it was 17-6. to six, Absolutely. Missouri was pretty much left for dead, and uh, Auburn gets down there and uh, first and goal, and they get no points. They miss a field goal, and then Brady Cook comes in and leads them on a drive and gets them back in the game, and the momentum turned, and it was like – the team was sitting there going, well, that's what we were waiting on happening, and it happened. Mm. So uh, it's just the oddest. It is the oddest group I've ever covered. No doubt. And that was a remarkable stat that you gave, and I'm glad that you gave it because it tells a story in that those other teams, like you said, usually when you're that efficient on offense and defense, you're good. But as you said, if you don't think turnovers matter, particularly timing of turnovers, Auburn's a perfect case. You mentioned Brady Cook, and now you know he's questionable for tomorrow. I have to say this. I caught some of that game, and you're right. Missouri was dead in the water. What did you think? Uh, and this is more of a Missouri question, but I, I knew the kid was a good player. I guess I didn't realize until he was out what he means that offense. Because, listen, if he plays the whole game, I think Missouri probably wins that game, maybe by more. But if he doesn't come back, there's no way they win it. Uh, and to, to get your ankle hurt early, go to the hospital, do whatever you got to do to come back in the game and lead your team to victory. That was a pretty heroic performance by the Missouri quarterback. No, no, you you, you couldn't say it any better. You know, it's the definition of what we all love to see in college football as a kid that he's, he's got a very few amount of games left on the schedule for him to play in as a college football player, and he wanted to play. And uh, he wanted to come back and, uh, and, and do everything he could to help his team. So, uh, unfortunately, Gary, we don't, we don't have a world full of that much anymore. Uh, and, and so, you know, from that standpoint, you know, it's good to see a, a kid like Brady Cook say, look, my team needs me. Uh, if I can go at all, I'm going to go back out there and see what I can do. And, and he did. So credit him. Uh, very good performance by a young man. Uh, and, uh, you know, it cost an Auburn because they ended Could not sustain drives. Uh, they couldn't get first downs. And the defense. Chase, is uh, is Brett breaking up really? Hang on, Brett. You're you're breaking up really, really bad. They hung Chase. On okay. Yeah, let me uh let me see Chase, what I can do. Uh, hey Brett, hold on a second. Let let Chase call you back. You have you started breaking up so badly that I, I missed most of this last answer. So, Chase, uh, hang up and call Brett back and see if we can get a little hey, bit clearer. Can you hear me? You got me? You got uh, me? Ch Chase, you got him now? Yeah, he should be good to go. Okay, it looks like you're you Brett, I, 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 I picked you, lost you up uh, about you were finishing up your point on, on Brady Cook, and then you went out on us. But it, you, Yeah, okay, you, well, I, I just I just sum that up. I, again, Brady Cook came in, and uh, Auburn should have offensively didn't do what they needed to do while he was out to put, you know, to put the game away. Right. To make it such a margin where – it wouldn't have mattered if he'd have come back. It wouldn't, you know, it wouldn't have wouldn't have made a difference. But uh, the defense giving up that last drive, ninety five yards. I, I'm not blaming them. They played majority of the game. They kept Auburn in a great situation. Only gave up six points to that to that really midway part of the the fourth quarter. So the offense once again just did not come through and do their part. All right, Chase. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> all right, Brett. I've, I, listen, you know how I am on Fridays when I'm running right here. I had Chase get Brett on earlier. <laughs> all right, Brett. Um, next up for Auburn, though, is another opportunity, as we said, at Kentucky, uh, a team that's struggling themselves. And again, uh, when you look at, you look at Auburn, um, they're in position to win most of these games. So can they break through, uh, tomorrow night on the road against the, the Wildcats? Can they? Absolutely. Uh, will they? Uh, that's the question. <laughs> and, and, and again, uh, can can Auburn get out of its own way? You know, uh, one of my co-hosts uh, said it best a few weeks ago uh, when Auburn had lost those three games, and uh, he said, you know, Auburn's zero three against themselves. It's really not anything about what the other team has done. It's about what Auburn's done to itself. And so, uh, Kentucky's not a very good football team. You and I talked about that earlier in the week, Gary. Uh, 
they're they're just not. I mean, they right. they um, uh, they're only a two and a half point favorite at home. Uh, they somehow found a way to win on on the road at Ole Miss, and that's a bad loss for Ole Miss. But they they're not going to have their starting running back tomorrow. They're 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 banged up. They got a lot of guys that are going to be out. And again, this just isn't a very good offensive football team. But uh, uh, I, I, you know, the 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 X factor is what what Auburn is going to show up. What what's Auburn football team? is going to be the team to show up. And, uh, you know, that's the million-dollar question right now, and nobody can mm-hmm. answer it. Uh, a lot of people would like to tell you what's going to happen, but they can't. And, um, I, you know, I, I, I told you this last week. I, had, uh, I said that Auburn had a chance to maybe turn their season around, coming off the bye and, mm-hmm. um, you know, playing against uh, Missouri and getting a win and starting a run. Well, seriously, after this game, I mean, you really have to decide what you want to do at quarterback moving forward. Uh Peyton Thorne's not coming back next year. You got Walker White sitting over there. You got Hank Brown. Uh, at what point do you decide that hey, you're gonna you're gonna try to go ahead and give these guys that are gonna be back next year an opportunity? And uh, you know we'll have to wait and see. I mean, I hope I hope Peyton Thorne can can lead Auburn to a victory tomorrow. But uh, the proof's in the pudding. He hadn't been able to do it so far, and uh, we'll have to wait and see, uh, like everybody else. All right, this is a football-centric state. You and I both know that. Uh, we know what the Alabama-Auburn rivalry means to people. And uh, it's been a tough year for Auburn. Uh, but I do sense that there is some solace that is being taken by Auburn fans. The fact that in this transition year from Saban to DeBoer, that Alabama is now having some issues. I'm not saying it covers up what's happening at Auburn. But do you sense, um, and we'll get to Hugh Free specifically in a moment, do you, do you sense at least Auburn fans are saying, well, thankfully Alabama's not, you know, number one. They're having some some problems. Is that is that a little bit of a, a little you know band aid for the for the wound, so to speak? You know how it works in this state. I mean, is that is that vibe you're getting from Auburn fans? Well, at least Alabama's not what they've been. Well, I mean, you know, uh, you you don't want your rival to to be successful, and Alabama's had a great run. I mean, let's be honest about it. I mean, you know, we you and I talked about this years ago. You said when. Saban leaves, it's just not going to be the same. I mean, right. you can say what you no do, and you can go out and get a good coach. And I think Kalen DeBoer is a good coach. I really do. But, you know, uh, trying to live up to to um, to expectations of following Nick Saban is about impossible. And, yeah, uh, right. So, yeah, I, I must kind of come back to reality a little bit, and they struggled. And, you know, they've been able to squeak out a couple of games they could have lost. lost. But, uh, you know, I know it was disappointing for them to lose to Tennessee last week, and so, yeah, I mean, you, you would enjoy it a little bit more as an Auburn fan if your team was halfway doing anything positive. But right That's now, right. it's, more, yeah. about, it's, it's more about what Auburn's not doing than it, than what Alabama is doing. So I think Auburn fans are just they're just trying to get, you know, some type of positive momentum uh, that they can lean on, just get a win. Yeah. They just they would just like to have a win at this point. Yeah, that's fair. Um, as for Hugh Freeze, because uh, – it has just been such, as you said, an unusual year. Auburn could have a much better record, but they don't. And I and I was talking about DeBoer this morning, uh, some of the in-game decisions that he's made that I think have not worked out well at all. And you look at you look at Auburn, I just think, and kind of Alabama starting to, same thing starting to happen. When you're playing a bunch of close games and they're consistently not going your way, to me, and I, and I want to get your response, forget the school, let's just say, you know, you're losing a bunch of close games. And, yeah, players got to make plays and all that. But to me, at that point, it really becomes a reflection of how you're coached, whether it's in the preparation, whether it's in the in-game management. Somewhere along the line, um, coaching matters. And, and you consistently lose. To me, that reflects more on the coaching staff than it does the players. Auburn's not getting blown out. You know, they're not going out there and getting beat 38-10. to 10. They're in these games. So how much do you put on the staff for not being able to – make a move or, or, or call a play or, or do something to get this team over the hump? Well, I think you have to put a lot of it on them. I mean, you know, you've heard him talk about, uh, you know, maybe coaching a little bit. Every, there's so much pressure on every call with this group. And, you know, how, how did you get to this point? It's the question. And, you know, what, what are you why, – why is it four hours of stress? You know, he said that in the press conference earlier mm-hmm. in the week. And, so this team's really just kind of walking on glass. It's like they're waiting again for something bad to happen. And, uh, you know, they're coaching that way, and they're trying to make the perfect call at the right time uh, instead of just going out and, and playing football. And I think the team's playing that way. 
uh, and I think they're you know they're 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 reading the vibes and they're feeling the vibes from the coaching staff. So um, I said that to a, a buddy of mine this morning. I said, you know, the team plays as the coaches coach, and uh, if if your coaches are uptight and they're stressed, and that, that's going to translate to the kids on the field. And right now Auburn's not coaching loose. Um, they feel like, and, and again, maybe they feel they're in that position because Auburn has made too many mistakes, and they're trying to coach around, you know, staying in a football game and not not getting themselves out of it with, with turnovers. So uh, it's a combination. When when you're trying to dig yourself out of a rut, uh, you're looking for anything positive. Auburn just needs to finish a football game uh, and, and get a win and see if they can build off that. All right, what's your prediction for tomorrow night? <laughs> you flip a quarter. <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, I and I want to say Auburn can win the game on the road, but I, I just don't know, Gary. I mean, I, I say this every week, and it and it, it comes back to the same old stuff. So um, I'm gonna ride with Auburn. I'm gonna say they get out of it, and they, I'm gonna say they win a uh, a 21 to 17 game. I don't think Kentucky can score, and I, and I think Auburn can can do enough offensively if they don't turn the football over to win it. So I'm gonna go with 21 17. Yeah, I got Auburn too. Of course, eventually, <laughs> I've been picking them every week. Eventually, I'm going to be right, and I'm with you. I, I think that they, uh, I think they break through tomorrow night. I mean, it, I mean, if, if they can't win this game, uh, even the Vanderbilt. Well, by all, for by all stretches, this is the this is the uh, the the most the least difficult game left on the schedule, and that's yeah, including Long so. Road. Bob and Rose so. five and one. By the way, so oh, listen, yeah, is- they you know uh, the AD there, uh, John Hartwell is on a show with me out of Memphis on Thursdays, and uh, I mean, great guy, I mean, marvelous job. In fact, I don't know if I told you this, Brad. I thought the weekend that Alabama beat Vanderbilt, or my Vanderbilt, Vanderbilt beat Alabama uh, in the in the Power Five, Power Four. I thought in the Group of Five, I thought Monroe's win over James Madison was just as big an upset. <laughs> you know what I mean? At that level, absolutely. No doubt. Um, I mean, it was a big win. A, yeah, they've done an unbelievable. He's that Brian Vincent has done an unbelievable job, and and uh, you know, when you look at UAB, boy, it just goes to show you. <laughs> mm. <laughs> you know, they could he could have been coaching them, and he's not. And we know what's going on over there. Hey, great stuff, man. Just a quick word about basketball before we close it out. I know, just like here in Tuscaloosa, there's a lot of excitement for the upcoming hoop season down at Auburn. Oh, no, no question. I mean, uh, get started here in a about a week and a half, and, um, you know, this is a talented roster. Uh, you're going to see a lot of new faces, uh, and you're going to see a lot of old faces and old veterans. This is a a, a team that uh, has got a great make, makeup, and, uh, you know, Coach Pearl, just like any coach, isn't happy where they are right now, but I think this is definitely a team that's got, uh, you know, a deep run in their back pocket in the NCAA tournament if everything can go the way they need it to. And, uh, they open up with a very different schedule. We all know that. Uh, they've got uh, tons of great teams. They're going to be playing Purdue, Ohio State, Houston, Duke. Uh, the Maui Invitational is loaded. Uh, it's going to be a tough uh, non-conference schedule, and then they get into the conference, and we all know what that's going to be like. So, uh, yeah, we're excited about getting this thing kicked off and uh, uh, seeing what this basketball team can do. And one final point on football, kind of where we're at, Brett, is we're talking about at Vanderbilt beating Alabama, uh, Indiana being 7-0 under Kurt Signetti. What a job they're doing. ULM, what they're doing. And then the other night when Kennesaw State, which had never won an FBS game ever. Of course, they, you know, just moved up recently, but still, they beat Liberty. Hugh Freeze's old school as a 28-and-a-half right. point underdog. Every Saturday, brother, you, you, I don't care who you are, at what level, where we're at in college football now, it's hard to win, man. And that's that's got to be the new mindset for fans is you just got to – your team's got to try to figure out a way to win the game they're playing that Saturday. I don't care who you are or you can get beat, man, if you're not ready to go. It's just – it's the rea- it's the new reality. Absolutely. Uh, you got you to gotta focus on the one at hand and not worry about what's a week or two weeks down the road or it ended up costing you a couple of times. So, uh, yep, you just – you take the task at hand and you move forward one at a time. That's right. Hey, thank you. Uh, let everybody know about Auburn Blitz and also, if, you know, social media or anything that you want to get out to the listeners from that angle. Yeah, we'll be on at uh, noon and uh, excited about that. And uh, you can always tune us in every single uh, day, Monday through Friday from noon to one and uh, Charter Channel 701, YouTube, Facebook. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. All right. It is uh, 1049 and uh, we got our final Break coming up. Wyatt Fulton just showed up, sitting next to me as he's getting ready for T-Town Sports Daily. They're going to open the doors at 11 a.m.
But um, I'm going to be back for one final segment. We're going to have my SEC point spread predictions. Also, we'll uh, give our... our uh, 19 nine. For the number one selling Nissan Rogue SUV, we offer discounts up to $3,000. And yes, we have two and four-wheel drives in stock. See BJ or Kylan at Townsend Nissan today. For more from Tide 100.9, let's it fly! on Twitter, Facebook, and SoundCloud. All right, it is uh, 10.52. Welcome back into the Gary Harris Show, live at Industry Irish Pub, and open up the doors at 11 a.m. Wyatt Fulton's going to be in with uh, T-Town Sports Daily. All right, uh, SEC point spread predictions, and uh, boy, I got back on track a couple weeks ago with a five and two week and then followed it up by falling flat on my face two five and one last week that's that's two pushes that i've had which is kind of hard to but uh, it's happened but anyway this week let's run them down real quickly alabama at tennessee and or alabama tennessee gary bama hosting mizzou i'd like to have alabama tennessee now i can i guarantee you i can win that one <laughs> I guarantee I'd hit that now. But uh, I picked this earlier in the week on Tider Insider TV, and I thought I I was giving Alabama quite a bit of credit. I picked it 38-23, Wyatt. And I said, and then this lie just has kept going up with the injury situation with, with Mizzou and Cook maybe not able to play and Noel not able to play. So it's up to 17 and a half. So based on my pick Tuesday night, I've got to stay. I've got to take Missouri because I got a thirty-eight twenty-three. Which sounds, I'd be very happy with thirty-eight twenty-three right yeah. now. But that wouldn't cover. No, I, w- I wouldn't cover. And you know, if Missouri is down to Drew Pine, I, I filled in for Ryan Fowler for the past couple of days. So I've gotten a lot more intel on Missouri, talking with a couple of different people, and just I, I don't think Drew Pine's going to be quite enough to defeat really Alabama know. by any stretch of the well, imagination. I, Albert, I know he won't be. You, you lose Nate Noel as well. Sounds like Luther Bird may not be 100% yeah, either, and so up. that's that's their big three banged up right yep. there. But still, this Alabama team has struggled a ton. Uh, 17 and a half is a lot of points yep. to lay out there. I think Missouri does cover, but I think Alabama wins that game. Yeah, I uh, if I had it to do over, I might even consider taking Alabama minus 17 and a half. But like I said, I've already picked it, so I'm going to stay with it. Auburn at Kentucky. Uh, we just <laughs> talked about that one with Brett Pritchard. I'm gonna ride Auburn until they win a game, Ellis. I mean, I'm just I'm on, I'm on them now. They're they're catching two and a half, so I'm taking Auburn tomorrow night plus the two and a half. I think they're gonna win outright at Kentucky. I just it's not they're not getting blown out here. They're, sooner or later, they're gonna stumble into a win. You know, I just don't I just don't trust that program right oh, now. I, that, I, I don't trust either one of them right now. And but you shouldn't. Here is the game of the night, game of the day. Did I still have look? I still haven't circled it. I'm still LSU at A and M. It's a pick 'em. Ooh. And I want LSU to win. I really do because I want them to be riding high. I, I just like Alabama's when people count Alabama out. And if they lose the game, um, it will be quiet as much on that matchup in two weeks. But I'm telling you what, I've been impressed with Elko and what he's done with that A&M talent. And they're at home. It's a pick. All they got to do is win the game. I, I, I'm taking A&M, Watt. This has been a series where the last seven wins have come from the home team. But which Connor Wigman's going to show up? Are we getting Missouri Connor Wigman or Mississippi State Connor Wigman? I think you go. I think at that point you go with the quarterback that has proven it a little bit more in certain situations, and that would be Garrett Nussmeyer. So I'm actually going to be opposite you. I would yeah. take LSU. No, it makes sense. It does make sense. But I'm I'm just I'm going with A and M. All right. Oh, oh, Oklahoma's terrible right now. I don't know the way around it. They can't score on you, me, and Ellis yeah, right now. And, and Ole Miss is is you know they're listen. It's not go, it's not played out for Ole Miss the way they thought it would. That that loss to Kentucky at home is brutal for Ole Miss. I think they're going to blow out Oklahoma. I got Ole Miss minus twenty. Yeah, I've I've got Ole Miss just running the table with that one. Here's one that I'm already regretting. I, every week I have a game I regret before I even pick it. I'm taking Mississippi State plus the seven at home against Arkansas. They're getting better. I know they've only won one game, and Arkansas is a little bit all over the place. I, I think that's a close game. I'm going to take the points there. I, I think I would, too. Mississippi State, you know, played a lot of top competition, really tough. Only lost by 10 to three straight top 15 opponents. Arkansas's coming in. They're in an odd spot right now. Is Bobby Petrino really the guy that you want to rely on to save your program? That's where Arkansas sits right now. Uh, give me give me Mississippi State as well. And lastly, uh, Texas at Vanderbilt. Texas laying 18 and a half coming off that loss at Georgia. You know, if you'd have said before the season – these two teams were going to play, and you would get Texas at 18 and a half. You'd have said, where did I sign up? Now, I mean, obviously, you see a case for Vanderbilt here with the way they've played, beating Alabama. Um, 
at the same time, I, I think I, and I like what Vanderbilt's done. I really do. I do not want to shortchange Cartley and and what they've done this year. But I think this is a reality check for Vanderbilt. I think this is a bad spot to be catching Texas. I think Vandy gets a dose of reality this week. They're still a pretty good team, but I, I'm going to take Texas here in late 18 and a half. I would take Vandy in this game. Okay. Isaiah Bond's probably going to miss this football game for Texas. What does Quinn Ewers look like? It's his confidence shot. Do they go back to Arch? And Vandy's riding high. They're sitting, they're sitting your same old Vanderbilt team. Mm-hmm. All right. This ain't your mom's Vandy team. No, this ain't your dad's all. Vandy team. This is a really solid, uh, Vanderbilt football team. And I, I'm not saying they're going to beat Texas, but whatever. 17 and a half, 18 points. 18 and a half, 18 and a half yeah. points. Uh, that's, that's a lot of points yeah. to lay on the road for and Texas. So I, I, I would take Vandy to cover. Yeah. And I, and I get it. Here's the same. Still though, this is still the veteran team that lost to Georgia State and was tied with Ball State in the fourth quarter. And it is. So uh, that shows you the talent level while better. Anyway, we'll see what happens. But hey, we got to wrap it up. All right. Here's our trivia question today was who was Nick Saban's first Starting quarterback in 2007, the answer was John Parker Wilson. We had 26 qualifiers. Chase, go ahead and spin the electronic roulette wheel. Yeah, we have Gavin, number 24. Gavin is our winner, and he'll get that Greg Gamble, uh, Man of Steel, Trent Richardson print from the 2011 Iron Bowl, 42-14 Alabama over Auburn. And thanks to everybody for playing. We'll uh, we'll have another giveaway next week as well. All right, that's going to wrap it up for Ministry Hours Pub, but just keep it dialed in right here at Tide 100.9 FM, 1230 AM WTBC, because Wyatt Fulton is just going to take over the headset and do T-Town Sports daily. Come on by. We're opening up uh, in one minute and 30 seconds here at Industry Irish Pub for lunch. So get on by and see everybody. Catch me on TV tonight with the local sports and for Football Friday from 1030 to 1130 on WVUA 23. Uh, people have asked me about a tower update, transmitter update. Hopefully soon we're going to be back to full power. All right. Uh, have a great day, everybody. Enjoy your weekend. Roll Tide. Listening to the Gary Harris Show on your home for Alabama sports. Tide 100.9 and streaming on the Tide 100.9 app. WTBC Tuscaloosa and W265CG Tuscaloosa, a Town Square media station. Tide 100.9 and streaming on the Tide 100.9 app. From the Fox Sports Studios in Los Angeles. Here's Nick Cope. Game one of the World Series is tonight in Los Angeles. It begins at 8 Eastern on Fox. Garrett Cole starts for the Yankees, and Jack Flaherty takes the ball for the Dodgers. Commanders quarterback Jaden Daniels was not seen at practice again today as he continues to nurse an injury to his ribs. The NFL fined Ravens linebacker Roquan Smith just over $16,000 for what they deemed a hip drop tackle on Buccaneers receiver Chris Godwin on Monday night. Godwin suffered a dislocated ankle on the play. On Thursday Night Football, the Rams beat the Vikings 30-20. to L.A. got their weapons back. Puka Nakua and Cooper Cup returned from injury. Cup caught five passes, including a touchdown. Nakua led the team with seven catches for 106 yards. Rams now 3-4. and four. Vikings fall to 5-2. and two. Tide 100.9. Tuscaloosa weather. The weather stays unseasonably warm today. Mostly sunny with a high at 86. Fair tonight, the low 58. Tomorrow, mostly sunny, the high 84. Sunday, partly sunny, a small